Yo, what's poppin' guys, and welcome to, um, I'm gonna be calling it a tutorial, but it's more, more, more or less a showcase, if anything. So, I'm going to be showing you today, hands down, the best scratch add-on that I have found. Uh, it, it's so good. The name of it is just Scratch Add-ons, right? That's the name of it. So just go to the Chrome Web Store, type in Scratch Add-ons, or go to this link. I'll try my best to put it in the description, but knowing me, I'll most likely forget. When you download it, you can pin it, and it should come up right here on your little tab, and you'll see these three you know, these three things. I'll close this, and we can just get to the, to this so you can see it. So, uh, you'll see right now, I have dark mode on the entire website. This add-on lets you do that. This add-on lets you do an incredible amount of things, um, such as stuff like this dark mode, editor dark mode, um, stuff to... S uh, like your remix button comes back uh, You can set up a way to find just profiles like if I do DK minigame, okay, well, I don't have it actually turned on I'll turn it on and then I'll show you but Watch this so we open this up As you see interestingly you have messaging games and add-ons, right? If you go into messages, you'll see if you're signed into a scratch account like I am I'm signed into DK horror and you go to your messages and you hit show more messages You can see all the messages on that profile right here right and keep in mind, you'd be able to then do that anywhere. Like you could open a new tab and you could go right here and check your scratch messages. You could just check all of it. Check your comments on your games, right? You could, you could do a whole bunch of stuff. Then in games, um, mainly this is for if you have any cloud variable, cloud variable games, you'll be able to see who's, who's like doing it, right? And then if you come to add-ons, this is the big part. This is the big cool part. I'm not going to do it in here. I'm going to hit the settings button up in the corner. And it's going to open this huge thing. And I'm going to show you what I like to turn on. So this is a new one that just came out today as of recording, right? So you're going to probably... My cats are playing with like this, this toy that squeaks. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. But here's the ones that I like to turn on. You can turn on a copy link to comment button, which adds a copy link button to scratch comments. Next to the report button, that just lets you copy the link to the comment. You can go ahead and turn that on, right? There's a pause button. It's See, it's a pause button. It literally lets you pause the project instead of just stopping it. So you can pause it and then come back to it later and unpause it. Really cool. 60 FPS mode, if you don't know, Scratch normally runs in 30 FPS. If you wanted to, you could change this to 120 FPS a second. And, it, it'll, and your games will run like that. I like to, I'm just going to keep it at 60, though. Well, actually, no. I'll, I'll go 120. I'll be crazy like that. All right, and at any moment, if you want to revert back to how it was in any of these things, you can hit this little button to refresh your default settings. Uh, I like to turn on block switching, right? Which, when you right click on a block, here I'll show you what that does. So, if we go to just like a random project, maybe we'll go to the Keegs project that we've been working on on stream. By the way, if you haven't been seeing that, definitely go check it out. So, look at what this lets you do. So, let's say you have an equals variable, right? Or an, an equals operator, right? And instead of wanting to drag that out and then drag in a big, uh, drag in a less than symbol, you can then right click it and just switch it right in here. You just switch it right here. Or like if you have a show block, you can right click it and change it to a hide block. A bunch of cool stuff like that. I absolutely love it. Y you can play around with all that kind of stuff. And it, see, it shows you what it is right here. These are the ones that you can turn on and off. Motion blocks, your X and Y variable, or not X and Y variables, your X and Y coordinates. You can switch that around. Your cloud games. Available when clicking the scratch add-ons icon shows how many scratchers are currently on multiplayer projects and their usernames. So any multiplayer project will come up in this games tab. Uh, it normally takes a while to load. It, it will load eventually. Right now, it's just deciding not to, I guess. There it is. See, look. Uh, Slither.io. The Slither.io version 1.10, this many people are playing it. These are the people who are playing that project right now. So if you want to know if someone was online in the game they were trying to get into, you can go ahead and check. Here it is. Like, DWIO, there, there's so many games. So many, so many. Like, right here, look at this. Um, Griff Patch 3D Laser Tag, nobody's playing Griff Patch 3D Laser Tag right now. Tank Arena, nobody's playing it. Uh, I like to turn on Data Category leak, uh, Tweaks, which, chain, uh, which provides tweaks to the variables, right? So... I'll just show you what that is. So basically, look. So right here, it'll show four all sprites, right? And then if I were to make a variable and make it for this sprite only, it separates it so you can see them. You can see them separately, right? I, I really like that. I really like having that added. I just find it easier to, like, you know, um, 
navigate. Now, this developer mode, uh, you might have, you might be using it if, if anything. This is seriously Griff Patch's entire developer mode. One click of a button right here adds it instantly. Here's your editor dark mode. To turn your darkness of your editor, you have three dark. You have three darker, three dark, dark editor, and experimental dark. I have it on three darker, and this is what it looks like. If we turn it to three dark, it looks like this. We can go ahead and turn it to dark editor, which looks like this. Or experimental dark, which is this. You got like little dots here and all this kind of stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, I, I do prefer three dark. That is my That's my favorite one. You do whatever you like. Oh, and then text shadows on blocks, right? Yeah. It just looks like that. You see it, kind of? Look, this is, gives a slight little shadow on the blocks. When you need that, I don't know. It's a nice little thing if you want to add. It kind of just makes the letters pop a bit. Um, I turn on message count and extension tool. as the current message count and the scratch add-ons icon. Again, once again, right here these things right here right the number okay your progress bar now what this is is um so when you save your project you'll get this little progress bar right here right that shows you how close it is to done being saved and then also when you when you load up a project right so if i re if i were to reload this you'll get the old progress bar where if you, i don't know if you've seen that where it reloads and shows all the assets loading 3.0 got rid of that but this can get can uh, bring it back all right, awesome. Next, uh, I like to turn on resizable comment input to change the size of uh, like the comments of the things, right? So it makes the comment input box vertically resizable in the Scratch 3.0 style pages. I think it's really nice. Scratch messaging is another one I like to turn on, which is available when clicking the add-ons to easily reading and replying right here, right here. It doesn't even matter. You don't have to be on Scratch to reply to these comments. Like, seriously, I could have replied to this comment right now by Fumbling Cow. I've seen him on stream. Yeah, see, he's on stream. Bam. Just like that. I, I love it. Show full areas is another one I like to have on, which shows the full, uh, well, I'm just going to, obviously, you can just read it here, but I'm going to read it to you. Shows the full signature of users on the forms. It shows what I've been doing on the profiles. So you can see, uh, you can show what they've been doing, and you, and you can scroll on their what's been happening. So basically what that means as you can is th this this stuff you can scroll and then load more of what he's been doing you can just load more of that stuff instead of just seeing what's right there uh studio manager tools i like to have that on lets you easily promote and remove anyone from your studios as well as leaving the studio through the creators tab just if you have a studio th just turn this on it makes everything so much more clear and easy i love it thumbnail setter this is for people who want to make thumbnails but don't want to add the code so basically you come to any game, right? And if that's on, you'll get this set thumbnail button. And you can click it and then add a file. And then you do that, and then boom, you have yourself a thumbnail right there. It's going to try to load it right now. I don't know why I did that. Yeah, thumbnail uploaded. Bam. So now if that worked, we could come and take a look. I've never actually tried it yet. I think that might be just because it's not shared, if anything. Yeah. Probably most likely just because I'm not shared. Just keep trying some stuff like that. Or it might be because the file is enormous. Uh, your project might be marked FFE and not, uh, NFE and not for everyone by the scratch. Chain if the thumbnail is animated. Um, not for everyone, projects aren't allowed to get onto the front page, the explore page, or search results. Meaning you can only get them through Google search terms. Okay. Website dark mode. This lets the entire scratch site have this dark theme to it, which I absolutely love. So... I definitely turn it on. And then experimental dark. Take a look at it. I don't even know if it loaded. It's... Hmm. I don't know. Huh. Weird. I never tried that. I just turned it on and I thought I, I liked that. I didn't even know this was a thing. I guess it doesn't work yet. It is beta. It's experimental. So then you can, I have all this stuff off. You can go through all this stuff by yourself. Like auto hide the block palette. I actually do like that one. What do I do? Why is this off? So what that does is when you come into your editor, right? So I don't think it loaded. Hold up, I gotta. There we go. We'll just save it, and then here we go. There we go. It gets rid of the progress. It gets rid of that bar until you drag your mouse over to it, which it will then open it back up. I really like that feature. I think it looks really nice. 
I really like it for a smaller screen. Like on a laptop, I definitely turn this on. For mine, I don't necessarily need it. So I'm gonna turn it off for, for my thing. It's because it's not necessary for me. But I mean, obviously then just make sure you reload like your tab if, if the things aren't working. Just reload and it'll, it'll fix itself. Uh, bitmap images copying. It allows you to copy the bitmap image from the paint editor and paste it on other websites. Which means if you have a sprite that is bitmap, right, and you make something, you can then copy it and paste it on another site. Like if you made another scratch project entirely, you could just copy this, go to that project, and then paste it instantly, and it'd, and it'd go there just fine. So you wouldn't have to redraw it. All this stuff you can look through. Like it, it, it's it's so nice. You can customize the block colors. I don't like to do that. I've gotten used to it. Display the thing on the left. So you can have old scratch. You want that old scratch style? You want that old scratch delicious 2.0 style? Bam! You have it. Here it is. It's fantastic. Do you remember when everything used to look like this? I remember. I remember that. Do you remember that? Because <laughs> I do. I like it off though. I've gotten used to. Th I've gotten used to 3.0 by now. So many things. So many things you can do. I absolutely love it. But yeah. And you can also uh, do them. If you just want editor stuff, you can hit that. Oh yeah. The three the big one. I forgot about the, the, the two big ones in the editor. Which is onion skinning and record the project video. So record the project video. If I reload. You'll get this little button that says start recording. Right? And it comes up and you set the, the uh, duration of how long you want to record for in seconds. So if you want to record for 10 seconds, right? Set it to 10 seconds. And you can include project sounds. Include your microphone or not. Um, do not start recording until the green flag is clicked. Stop recording after the project has stopped. And you hit start. It'll allow it to use your microphone if you turn on your microphone. It says waiting. And you wait and wait until the green flag is clicked. It says stop recording now. So you can go ahead and play your project and set it up. And when your 10 seconds or however long you set your thing up is done, it'll go ahead and it will stop recording. And then it'll download you a video. And if you go ahead and click on that video, it says stop recording now. So you can go ahead and play your project and set it up. And when your 10 seconds or however long you set your thing up is done, it'll it on the video just like that. You have the video now. Really cool. I think it's an interesting thing. If you want to like uh, record a video, if you want to like add a teaser trailer, now you don't have to animate a teaser trailer. You could just record some of the gameplay and then make that your thing. It's so it's so simple. Uh, oh yeah, pause button. Forgot. There it is. <laughs> it shows up right there. I forgot to say that. Onion skinning. Now, animators, this is for you. If you're an animator in any other project or any other software, you know what onion skinning is. Let's say we come to this, right? And you make, let's make a new sprite because onion skinning will kind of be weird on that one because I already have costumes. So let's say you want to make like a, a stick figure, right? So you go ahead, you grab your thing and you start, you start animating, right? You start like drawing a little stick guy. And now when you make your new, when you make your new thing, right? Your, your new costume, you can't draw the next frame because you don't know exactly where that stick man was and you don't want to copy this guy and then move him, right? So what you do is right here, you'll see that this little button has appeared right next to your um, zoom in and zoom out. You'll have this toggle onion skin and when you click that, you will see a slight frame of, wh of where the uh, stick man used to be so you can then draw the next frame, make a new costume and you can continue doing this, right? And if you come to your settings, you can you can uh, set up some stuff. So default pro uh, previous costumes, that was just one. But if you set it to like two, right? If you then set it on two, and then we can reload our project so we can take a look at it. Instead of just showing that one like we did, um, instead what it will do is I have to make it, I didn't actually save that for what it was at. So we draw our stick guy, right? We make a new costume, turn on onion skinning. There it is. We draw our second one, maybe, right? Make a new costume. Now both of them show, but it, they get slightly darker or slightly uh, more transparent. And then you delete it, it gets rid of that last one, which now you have two. And again, you can change that to as many as you want forward and as many as you want 
for as many as you want backwards and as many as you want forward. What the forward means is mainly for in betweening. And if you don't know what in betweening is, it's when you have an animation, but it, let's say it's a bit choppy, so you keep adding frames in between the frames you already have. So we'll ju I'll just make it a dot, right? So we have the big dot, big dot, big dot. So I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger for for um, us for these purposes. So we got a dot. Cool. Turn on onion skinning. Paint. Right, so you'll see that only so far that the back one is showing. What about the front one? Well, that's because there's nothing in front of the costume we're on. If we were to go to three, you'd see the things in front and the things in the back. And you see these things aren't selectable. You can't you can't erase them. Like it, it's great. This is honestly on you skinning. If you like animating, definitely come to this. Like see, especially for stuff like this, you'll get to like see what's going on, how they're moving, all that super cool stuff. And with the click of a button, you make it go away. And then right here, you could even change the options right here. Super easy. You just don't have to go to the thing. Super nice. Previous costumes, you can move it up and down. Amazing. Absolutely love it. So, yeah. Those are some big ones. There are a bunch of stuff you can look through. Mouse position. That's another cool one. Messages in editor. What those ones do is pr pretty basic. I mean, really, like, what, I want you to guess what they do. Come on, use a big brain. You can figure out what they do. One just shows your mouse position right here. Another one lets you see your messages. Just, like, like see your, see your message options right through here. And that's really cool. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the guy we responded to responded already. So, yeah, <laughs> you're in a video, man. You're in a video right now. You know what? We'll tell him. We'll even use the scratch menu. To, sh to, to tell him uh you're in a video right now coming out in a bit he's gonna see he's gonna see this he's probably gonna watch the video because i know this guy a lot like i don't really know him but like you know what i mean but yeah that's where i'm gonna leave this video thank you guys so much for watching if you liked it and like it if you didn't like it like it anyways because uh you guys oh my goodness you can do so much stuff remix tree button i don't know why i didn't have that on but oh my goodness so much stuff you can do uh oh there's one more there's one more good one that i really want to show you and that's profile banner what it does is it takes your featured project and when you go to your profile tab it puts it up nice like this and then you get these things that look super nice and if you go into a project that's uh what this one is this uh project notes tab so if you go to like a project page if we could get to the project page will the project page load maybe Look, you have instructions and notes and credits in two different tabs now. And then there's your remix tree button that you can go ahead and look up. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyways. Because uh, I hope you guys will be using this and it'll make your Scratch experience that much nicer as you are coding and s surfing through Scratch. Uh, yeah, while you're at it, why not subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content then help me out a lot. Um, I'm, I'm trying to reach a thousand. That's what we're trying to get to. We're super close. We're more than a third. Of, we're more than, um, three fourths of the way there. I can't wait. It's going to be such a big thing. We're doing face reveal at 1000, but yeah, join this quick link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.